Hey everybody, I'm Jimmy Owens. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Unicorn. Well, I'm excited, and today we have Rebecca Reynolds. Woo! Thanks for coming. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm really excited. Yeah, me too. Um, you're you're a ball of energy. You always have good ideas, and I think you're you're always looking to just take everything to the next level. Like always improving, yeah. always communicating, always you know uh, coaching people. And um, I'm you know I'm grateful to know you. So yeah. thanks I, thanks for being here. Uh, thank you. Shout out to Sybil with uh, Pros Make Ready for introducing us. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> she sanitized the room today. Did she really? No. Oh. <laughs> 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 Can't you feel the Christmas and the, the Christmas and the Christmas crispness, not Christmas? Yeah. Can't, can't <laughs> no. you feel the Christmas in the air? It's I wish Christmas was June. in the air. Yeah. It's June. Hey, it's halfway. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, on. yeah. Pros make ready, ready, good stuff. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if you know this or not. Totally sidetracked, but they also can uh, help with smells you don't want to smell anymore. Odors yeah, and sm- stuff like yeah, that. Odors and stuff like that. So I always. This is an unpaid sponsorship, but we yeah, really no like kidding. Sybil's work. <laughs> yep. Um, so, yeah, thank you for introducing us. Um, Rebecca, tell me, the, the question we always want answered here is, why, why you are here is, what makes you a unicorn? Yeah, so I think what makes me a unicorn is I, I'm a big advocate for do it scared, and every great thing I've ever done in my life was one of the scariest decisions I ever made in my life. Um, Dating my husband, um, he was actually the boss's son of the company I was working at at the time. Uh, So obviously I'm like, oh cool, I might date him, might fall in love, might get married, also might lose my dream job if we break up. (laughs) And uh, like dating him was one of the scariest things I ever did. I actually wound up falling in love with him, the company I worked for, it was what led me down the path of marketing. Um, It let me see business from like the owner's perspective because I got my start working at a small business wound up marrying into the small business I learned marketing from the perspective of this is my baby like this is my business like Mm -hmm. money coming in is what's paying my bills right drink the Kool-Aid yeah exactly I joined the cult it was amazing um and I I just got to see marketing from a perspective of Business, like starting your own business and entrepreneurship changes the trajectory of your life, your family's life, your kids' lives. Um, the people that I worked for, they their kids grew up watching their parents in entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. And I didn't grow up with that. Uh, and my dad is a wonderful man. He's a hard worker, but he grew up in a in a stable government job. And he was able to provide a great life for us as kids. Um, But I didn't grow up thinking I can go start my own thing. Mm -hmm. But I get into this job um, that was, at the time, it felt like it was way more than I was qualified to do. I was asked to, like, move into shipping. I started in shipping um, at this clothing company and just shipping out packages. Are we plugging them? Huh? Are we plugging them? Do you want me to? I'm just picking. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, but I, 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 I say that because it is important. I started bottom up. I didn't just, you know, go to college, get a degree, and then started a marketing job. I yep. started in shipping um, in a company that I loved the mission for. And so I did my best in shipping. And they were like, hey, why don't you take over our, con- or our company Instagram account? And I was like, okay, that sounds fun. Mm-hmm. And I loved it. I loved the creativity of it. Um, I loved that chase of... How do I get our numbers up? How do I get mm-hmm. more people to follow us? How do I get more people to engage with us? How do I get more people to shop with us? Mm-hmm. And I realized that was my first spark in an entrepreneur set. Like they were not driving my drive to like increase. Right. Um, it was just really challenging. And you weren't making more money because you brought more in. You were just no. doing, you're trying to do a really good yeah, job. I, I yeah. W- yeah, I was learning. That's typically new- how you get a raise. You do the work before you. A hundred percent. Yep. Yeah. And so I did that for a while. They wound up promoting me to a shipping manager. Again, no experience in management. So I took on another task that I had no previous experience. And they're like, oh, you'll just learn as you go. We'll train you. Um, Which also meant um, we're going to throw you in this sink or swim, figure it out. Or, you know, Mm -hmm. which honestly, in my opinion, is the best freaking way to learn. And I feel like people who love entrepreneurship and growth thrive in that because it's Immediately, you're given this huge task, and you're like, problem solve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's really what entrepreneurs do. They problem solve. They 
find a problem in the market or in the industry and they say, I'm going to fix this and I'm going to fix it better than anyone else can. Yep. Um, so I started in their shipping department. I wasn't there for very long before they were like, you know what, you're doing a good job with Instagram. Let's move you into Facebook. So they pulled me out of shipping, put me learning Facebook post, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, um, Instagram itself, just marketing in general. Mm -hmm. And I start doing this, that same fire starts up of, okay, uh, I'm chasing the numbers. I'm chasing sales. I want to like do this better than anyone else. What gets people's attention? And I realized what I loved was the marketing. It was, mm -hmm. how do I get people's attention and how do I keep it? How do I get people's attention and like match our products to people who want these exact products? Okay. And that was when I was going to college at the time. So I was working full time. I was a student full time. Going to college for what? I was going to college for a general just business degree. Um, and that was when I was like, you know what? I want to go into marketing. Like this is what I want to specialize in. So I started marketing and training in marketing before I went to school for training in marketing, mm -hmm. um, which was honestly 10 times better. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you on yeah. that. Yeah, learning by doing is 10 times better than learning by somebody reading a book to me and telling me what to do. Yeah, so, two different experiences. Exactly. And so it was really neat because I got to, I would get into a class where they're teaching text marketing and lo and behold at my company, they're like, hey, we're going to hand over our text marketing channels to you. And I'm like, great, I'm going through a class on how to do that. So I would use the company I was working at for my projects at sure. school and I would take what I was learning at, for my projects at school and introduce them to the company I was working for. I mean, for. it probably allowed you to, you know, you're introduced to a subject mm -hmm. or, you know, and you're able to dive deeper because you already know how part of it works. Exactly. Right? I mean, it's like reading a book more than once. You get more something out of it yeah. every time you read it. Yeah. And a lot of people, um, I learn best by doing. Like, I love the... Honestly, I tell people you can either suck fast or you can suck slow. Um, sure. Sucking fast means just crank it out, learn as you go, do it before you're ready, do it scared. Yep. And in doing that, I feel like because I am willing to be bad at it, it is what has helped me get good at it. Because I'm not trying to prove to somebody that I'm already the best. It's right. I'm willing to admit, no, I don't know that. I'm going to learn that. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know that. I'm going to learn how to do it and I'm going to do it while I learn it. Um, and I feel like that has been like a key differentiator in my business uh, growth versus some other people's business, especially in the marketing industry. Um, people want to be the expert and they act like they know everything. Mm -hmm. And really you should be upfront with, this is what I know well, this is how to do it. These are things I don't know well, so let me go learn more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think it even goes like in the market, you know, like marketers now, businesses now, mm -hmm. they may know all of it, but they, they may not come out and say they, they don't even want to show what they do. And that's right. part of the problem right now, right? right? People aren't even want to show what they do, or if they do want to show what they do, they don't know how to show what they do. Yeah. Cause they just do it. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so. The, the magic is taken out of it when you're doing it every day and you see it as mundane. Right. Yeah. Or like your tasks that you have to get done uh, to make everything else go. Right, yeah. right. I, one thing I think is really cool with small business is, because I do a lot of coaching with small businesses. Um, okay. I do coaching with small businesses, and then I do management um, for like large e-com brands. Like I worked with large Shopify stores that are running eight figures okay. um, a year, and that's um, we've talked yep. about projects like yep. that. And then I have projects where I'm working with small local businesses who just, they've never used Instagram before in their life and they don't know how to post a video. Yeah. So just to yeah. clarify, so you did work at the clothing store. You don't work at the clothing store. Yes. You have your own business now. Tell me what you do. Yeah. So, okay. So I, <laughs> I just got so excited about my beginning story. Yeah. So I own Reynolds Media Marketing um, and it is a marketing consulting and management company, um, but I'm a freelancer. So I hire other freelancers to help me in areas where I need assistance. So like um, if someone is an expert in Facebook groups, I would mm -hmm. hire them in on projects. Um, but I, what I do is I teach people how to use social media to get in front of and attract clients and leads. Okay. Um, I love social media because it's low cost to entry. Um, it, you, we were just talking about before the show, like I crank out content on yeah, my pages. Right. Yeah. Um, I was asking, I was asking her, um, how, how often she records videos and, and posts and stuff. A week or a day, I don't remember what it was, but. I tried, so when I'm in growth mode, I post like five a day uh, on five my feed. Five posts a day? On my feed. It's five posts a day? Yeah, so uh, 
on my Instagram stories, I share those to my Facebook and I try to get anywhere from five to 20 out on that sucker a day. Um, and it's how I get most of my leads. Um, I have grown my business to, it is now a six figure business in the course of, I think February was my last day at my job. So, but I started in January. So February of this year, 2022, 2022. Yep. February of 2022 this year, I had my last day at my nine to five job and I launched Reynolds Media Marketing full time myself. I'd been doing freelance for the last three years um, Mm -hmm. on one off projects in addition to my nine to five. But I was like, you know what, I'm going to sink into this. So within February, March, April, May, June, within four months, we've grown that business to six figures. Um, with social media marketing. Awesome. So, Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And she's even had a first child. Oh, yeah. I well, mean, come on. There's yeah. a lot going on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my son was the whole reason I decided to take off on my own anyway. And start your own business. A hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, which because, sounds so counterintuitive because uh, yeah. yeah. you're like, more work, yeah. more responsibility. No insurance. Um, <laughs> that makes yeah. no sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, it I was, can feed the baby. Right? I can feed the baby. <laughs> <laughs> I can buy him formula. No, I... I make the formula. Yeah. I mean, I can feed the baby. Yeah. No, I got into it because when I got... So my main platform is TikTok, okay? So in February of this year, I started posting on that platform Literally, we went from 200 followers on my TikTok to uh, I'm at 160,000 followers on TikTok currently. Okay. And I, I gain a ton of leads from that platform. And, what do your leads say? Uh, like, what do you mean? Like, um, I mean, I just, what, what's the message that you get? So like someone might message. What do you and, consider a lead, right? Yeah. So I consider a lead somebody who is ready to invest in their social media strategy. Okay. So my uh, a lead for me might look like, hey, I've seen what you've been posting. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to use social media to grow my business. I want to set up a, dis- uh, a, a they don't call it a discovery yeah. call. They're like, I want to set up a phone call. Right. Um, and because my marketing, because my social media precedes me, yep. by the time they get to me, they already know me mm-hmm. well enough to know like. What you're going to do. Gonna, yep. I'm going to show up to the meeting in a t-shirt. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like I, like. It's just, it's great because it weeds out a lot of the people I don't want to work with. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, I love social media because so leads will come to me, they'll shoot me a message or they'll send me an email and say, hey, I'm interested. I saw you're posting about this social media group that you're doing. I'd love more information about that. Right. Or even better, they'll say, hey, I am experiencing this problem. They might say, I've been on social media for three years. I haven't gotten a single sale off of it. What am I doing wrong? Yeah. Um, and is that why you created the class, the group? Yeah. It, it, she has a group as well. What yeah. is it? Uh, so I own uh, RMM Small Business Academy. Um, it's a $50 a month Facebook group, and it's for small businesses who don't have the money yet to invest in a full-on like consultation mm-hmm. service, management services. Um, you have the time, but you don't have the money. Yes, right? exactly. You I have mean, the time, you don't have the That's what I hear is like, you know, social media is so cheap to do. It is, but like... Man, how valuable is your time? Right. Right? Right. It depends on what you want to get done. Right. When when you're small, um, everything is costs you time. Uh, yep. you're, you're mitigating the cost because you're not outsourcing, but it means it's all going to be on you. Yeah. And uh, there is a learning curve that comes with learning a new skill or task. So we do two things. We teach entrepreneurs and small businesses how to market themselves and use social media to create leads. And then we also teach if maybe they have a couple employees, they can pay to put their employees in there. And then their employee, uh, whether it's a virtual assistant or whatever, they can then learn things that they can start doing to help grow the business. So. It's good for the people who are still small. They don't have a lot of money to invest, but they do want to breach, like branch out into something. So I'll put you on the spot. Okay. What have been the results of the people that have taken it? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I have one lady. Uh, her name is Mindy. Cut. She said, she said cut. I'm just joking. Cut. No, no. I'll happily <laughs> share. Saying. Literally. I mean, because here's the deal. The group is about getting support on mm-hmm. what you learn. I'll yep. tell you right here, if you want to grow your social media pages, post three to time three to five times a day for the next month, and you will be amazed at what happens. Right. That's the secret sauce. But also with that, (laughs) I don't want to see like clouds in the sky. Like it depends on what you, what you're, what you Uh, have, right? See, but I mean, here's the deal. If you do that for a month, yeah, some of, most of those posts are going to suck. 
they're going to yeah. be bad. Well, so they're going to be super bad. There are people that I, you know, connected with, and I'm yeah. like, I don't really understand what I'm looking at. Like, I don't think you have a very creative eye. Like, that's the worst picture I've ever seen. <laughs> and then, it, you're, and you're like, maybe that's just an accident. And you're like, the next day, you're like, that was not an accident. <laughs> That's just as horrible as the last weeks. Like yes. some people just have a really bad eye and I don't even know what I was looking at. Like, why are we, it's like a rant. Was that in your pocket? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, just like, <laughs> so, okay. Any, you know what I'm talking so about? Let me go. There's those. Yeah. So let me don't go. Don't do those. Let me pull on. That. No, do do those. Oh, here's the deal. <laughs> no. Messy, poorly done action. As long as you grow from it. They grow I, from it. I am all about. Okay. It's all up here. Yeah. <laughs> You remember them, though. You're talking about them however long oh. later. <laughs> but that's what I think, like, messy action and imperfect action. So I'm not saying put out garbage for the rest no, of your I'm life. No, I'm with you. Yeah, but if you, like, so when I started growing on my TikTok, I posted 8 to 10 videos a day for a month. And they 90% of them were terrible. They were so bad. But at the end of that month, I had 100 videos to go back and look at and say, I did this right. I did this wrong. I didn't get a good attention here. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good subject for me. I want to retouch on that. Right. It gives me all this data right. on what to move forward People with commented next. on and they shared or they liked this one more. So you can go back and dive into that exactly. deeper. Is exactly. that what you're saying? Exactly. And you get better because you're doing yeah. Um, have you heard, I'll have to find the source for it. Have you heard the story of the photography professor who gave an assignment to half his class? Like, have you heard that story? Um, no, I was trying to think of something witty. Good. No, ha. I've not heard of it. Boo, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> not fast enough. <laughs> no, just kidding. But like, so I read it on Facebook, so I'd have to find the source for it. But it was a photography professor at a university and he gave half of his students the, uh, option at the end of the semester, they would be graded on how many pictures they produced. Like basically he said, the more pictures you get, like if you give me over 10,000 pictures, like you're going to get an A, but you need to get me as many photos as possible. Because they got better and better and better, didn't they? uh Uh-huh. The other group, he said, I'm going to grade you on one perfect photo. Yeah. And so he was like, you just have to turn in one photo. Your entire 15 of you turn in one photo. And if that photo is perfect, you will get an A. So one had volume, one had quality, and what he noticed at the end of the semester was the group that had quantity had better quality by the end of the semester because their yeah. goal was get as many reps in as yeah. possible. It's like producing a video podcast and yep. having a table and light set up and mics ready to go. Yep. Right. And the other group, um, they stressed and agonized over the one photo they were going to take. So there were many photos they didn't take that could have been great Mm -hmm. because they weren't, they didn't think they were perfect. And so I like that same strategy with social media. Well, it becomes more stressful too, right? Mm -hmm. If you're the student, you have to get the perfect photo. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Yeah. I mean, there's so many things that could go wrong. Yeah. Like maybe the professor doesn't like milkshakes, (laughs) right? right? And (laughs) there's a picture of a milkshake right? or whatever. Right. But but, but, but perfection kills creativity and social media rewards authenticity and Mm -hmm. creativity. I agree with you. Yeah. I don't remember where I was going with that, but that was a good story, huh? (laughs) 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 Confetti. Yeah. (laughs) Ryan's adding it. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. That was great. (laughs) But like, uh, my point is though, is that if you want to grow on social media, start getting in the reps, start posting. Um, because even with like figuring out likes, comments, people who engaged with something, I was also able to figure out, I like the way I talked about that. Mm-hmm. That really feels authentic to me, the way I talked about that. Right. And then you start building a brand and a business based on what I believe resonates with me and then I attract the people who I most want to work with if that makes sense yeah. so there are videos I put out I know they're not going to be my most popular videos not every video is designed to go viral um, but I put them out because I'm like you know what like I think this is going to help somebody yeah um, and for the- example my favorite ones you just put out were this morning were all about us oh yeah, oh, yeah. I was like I was like <laughs> really like she made like Five stories already this morning about coming in, and I was just, you know, grateful for that. So I really appreciate it. And I yeah, mean, yeah, absolutely. But that's part of like part what I love about social media is it is social. 
So I can share people I love, brands I love, companies I love. There's not a thumbs down, though. It's not that social. What do you mean? I want to say, no, I don't like it. Oh, right? there is a thumbs is down. A thumbs people down? leave mean comments what? on stuff oh, all no, the time. Yeah. I can't, I'm not that guy. I couldn't leave a mean comment if I could hit a thumbs down. There are plenty of people Anyways. on the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not. I try to uh, not associate with those people. Yeah, yeah. Or we just have happy, you know, rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the unicorn, if you're not bringing happy, please get off. <laughs> get out of here if you want to hit the thumbs down. Yeah. But just leave a comment. Let us know what we can change. Yeah. Um, you know, we've gotten in this kind of far, but I need to take a moment and say thank you to Allied Medical Marketing for being our sponsor for this episode. Uh, they make this possible. Um, thank you. We're helping hospitals, clinics, and doctors train their staff and turn patient education into marketing. It's time to start letting your patients meet their physician before they meet their physician with Ally Medical Marketing. So you talk about posting on social media and getting started. What is your magic trick to get so many posts out? Do you follow a script? Do you schedule it? Do you set that? Like how often do you like Mondays? I sit down and write out all the content I want. How much is spur of the moment? You know, we'll go there and then we could dive into how you help your clients with their social media and planning. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Are, So how do you create your own content? What's your, so, not your secret sauce, but how do you, planning is a huge yeah. thing. I'm not the best planner. I'm, yeah. I'm more of a MacGyver, yeah. you know? Let me fix this right now. So. Yeah, I, I am very much do right now. Um, and I think that's to my detriment and to my aid. That is kind of how I run everything in my business. So at least for my personal marketing. So I, what I do for my marketing is I schedule it throughout my day. The idea of sitting down and recording, like because I literally put out 15 to 20 mm -hmm. stories a day, recording 60, 80, 100 videos all in one sitting to schedule out throughout the week is just not a good time for me. Um, You'd have to change your shirts. No, but that's just I'm it. Just I saying. wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would wear the same freaking shirt and I would schedule it out for the next three months. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But no, I don't think so. Because people are more concerned with the quality of the content, like what you're saying and the message you're giving more than what shirt you're wearing. Like if someone unfollows me because I wear the same shirt in every video, like please leave. <laughs> yeah. There's the thumbs down button. Yeah. There's the thumbs down button. <laughs> but um, like I, rec I plan content in my day. So every single morning I go to the gym. When I get to the gym, either right before or right after, is when I record my stories because it's already built into my day. I take 10 to 15 minutes. And then two, it kind of gives me something fresh because each day something else is on my mind. So this morning, obviously, I'm thinking about this podcast. I'm excited. It's something new for me. It's kind of scary for me. Um, and it's making me learn a new skill set. So today, my whole theme for all my content today will be learning a new skill set doing things before you're ready, launching into things, you know, feet first and just going for it. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, you know, I celebrate the fact that I'm getting on a podcast and I'm, you know, recording videos and putting stuff out. Uh, I recorded a podcast last week and that was my first ever like guest appearance on a podcast. And so, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I talked about that and for me, it's something I'm learning right now. So it feels really genuine. It feels authentic. Mm -hmm. I'm genuinely excited about it. Um, and so that is how I build out my content. I do it throughout my day. So when I leave here, yep. I will go sit in my car and I will record another couple pieces of content about my experience and I will post them out and then content's done for the day. Right on. So you, you really just build around your day and how it relates to what you do. Mm -hmm. Like you as a business, I mean, you're about creating content. I want to help right. you create content. I want to get you traction. I want to get you leads. Right. And then just what you just talked about, is how you're getting leads. Yep. Yep. I And here's what I love about that. I teach brands how to get leads and sales Why I, too, as a personal brand, am doing exactly what I'm teaching. Right. I think that uh, says something about integrity when you believe in what you're teaching. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I hate that phrase, uh, people who can't teach. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be someone who can and teaches. Right. And so uh, I do what I I practice what I preach. I put out content like crazy. Um, I practice authentic posting so I don't get all perfect and make sure the outfit's on point. Mm -hmm. and, like I get in my car. I'm like, that's a good idea. Record the video, post. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what about burnout? 
have you hit your burnout point yet? Are you tired uh -huh. of making videos? Like, how have you Sometimes dealt with I, that, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. like if I'm a business owner, I took your $50 a month class uh -huh. and then I'm like, oh, this is great. I'm getting busy. Yeah. Uh, do I really need to create a video today? You know yeah. that you need to. Um, but what about burnout? Like, what do you do? I mean, yeah. if you're the face of the business, right? what do you do? Right. Like, so... Uh, it's a two-way street. So there's two ways I tell businesses how to respond to this because I'm not immune to it. I have 100% experience burnout. So one is on the days I have a lot of energy. Like I know I'm going to leave this podcast with like a bunch of ideas. Like you've already got my wheels turning for okay. things I want to talk about. So I will probably go to my car. I'll record a bunch of ideas. I won't post them all today. And so three days from now, if I experience burnout, I'll post one of those instead. Okay. Like I'll post one of the videos I recorded today. So on days that you're higher energy or play, this is for personal brands where you and your business are the content. Right. Um, people have content teams to manage consistent content. Like if, if my job is a content creator for my nine to five job, I can't just come and be like, I'm burned out, can't make content today. <laughs> right, right, right. But if I'm the business owner and I am the brand, two options. I create a backlog of content that I can post when I'm burnt out. I can do what I call easy content, which is where literally I pick up my phone, I take a selfie, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I just write a caption in, so I don't have to record a video. Yeah. I just write in a caption. Um, it's usually a story or something that is easy for me to just get off my chest. Um, and I put that out and that's my content for the day. Uh, the other option is, is if you are consistently putting out, you know, a video a day or four videos a week, no one's going to notice if you don't post for a week. Sure. Like people, um, I see it all the time, especially with influencers. They'll disappear from their channels for a week and they'll come back on. They're like, hey guys, I'm so sorry. I haven't been around. I've been so busy. That sounds worse. Right. Just don't be there for a week. And in a week, come back like nothing happened. Because honestly, nobody's going to notice. Well, I just got back from vacation and it's good to be back. Yeah, that's That'd fine. That'd be all right. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. I, I went on a vacation yeah. last week and I didn't post anything. And I know, I noticed. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you noticed? <laughs> but here's the deal. The people who feel your absence are probably your biggest fans. Mm -hmm. And so like your biggest fans aren't going to dock you for not posting. Um, that's the great thing about being a business owner and an entrepreneur is I don't have a boss. Um, but the bad part about being a business owner and an entrepreneur is I don't have a boss. Yeah. So like I have to like have the discipline to do the dailies. Yeah. I have a different take on that. So, mm -hmm. um, cause I have a friend that's like, Oh, you're living the American dream. I was like, mm, that's what it looks like. huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> you don't see me dying in the background. <laughs> you know, yeah. If you could just see how I feel. Um, yeah, but I 100%. feel like, um, you know, I have a lot of bosses. Every mm -hmm. one of our clients is a boss and we mm. have all of these expectations that we have to live up to. Yeah. I can choose not to, but in theory, every new client, every client, every meeting, those yeah. are all my boss. So we, we have a lot of bosses that we report to. So entrepreneurship, uh, I don't view as bossless by any means in my world. Yeah. So, yeah. And see, I think I have the opposite take on that because yeah. As an entrepreneur, I can choose who I work with. And sure. so I only choose to work with businesses and brands that I really think that I can serve. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I'm meeting my expectations for how I can serve them. Like I have several accounts that they're like, hey, this looks great. And I'm like, okay, but what are your sales at? And they'll tell me and I'm like, it's not good enough. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I'm going to start introducing these things to fix that. Like my expectation of, and I'm not saying like, Brands and businesses, they're ex like if I'm serving them, like, yes, I need to meet their expectations. I need yep. to match their brand. Um, but at the end of the day, like I want to know I serve them to my greatest capacity. So still at the end of the day, I'm answering to myself of if yeah. I slacked off, I know I did. Yeah, like, I get it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Here's those crickets. <laughs> <Just joking. laughs> um, so let's talk about you and your clients, right? Yeah. We talked about you, yeah. how you schedule your stuff because you're, you're the brand and you're mm -hmm. the one pushing the content. How's that work with your clients? Like, you know, is there, what's a, yeah. a routine? Yeah, so. They uh, go to the gym, they post in their car. <laughs> right, <laughs> so I tell them again, everybody is different. So if they are the brand, so I'm working with a couple right now um, and they are a. Like a couple? Yeah, or yeah, like, yeah, they're 
two, like two they're married. Ones. Oh, yeah, okay. sorry. The, this <laughs> this is I'm working with several brands, but this is a couple brand, husband and wife. They've been married for a while. They they've grown their businesses to be over seven figures. They're okay. uh, Christian faith based entrepreneurs, and they want to move into. Um, coaching and business coaching and like uh, like faith based entrepreneurship. Okay, and so that's their brand. That's their goal. And so, really, what I'm going to tell you to do as a brand and as a business is going to be based on what are your goals. Their goals were grow as quickly as possible on our platform so that we can reach more people and start gaining leads and opportunities to speak. So they mm-hmm. got the mission of post this many times a day. I don't care what you put out, but get something out to Mm -hmm. start with. And after we looked at that for a month, then we came back and I was like, okay, here are scripts. Um, And by scripts, I don't mean word for word, like reading off a a teleprompter, but scripts being, this is the subject, use this sentence at the beginning as your hook, Mm -hmm. and then go into your teaching. and so for them, we grew them from 80 followers on TikTok to, I think they have 3,400 today, and that was three months ago. They have their first, uh, I believe they had eight business leads, um, people reaching out to them and emailing, wanting you know mm-hmm. to figure out how to work with them. We put together a pricing strategy for them next week because they're starting to get leads, so now we want to move into sales. Okay. They got invited to speak on their first podcast. They're speaking at a um, entrepreneur faith-based uh, business seminar in Texas, okay. not too long from now. So they got all these opportunities and platforms to speak on, but that was their goal. Mm-hmm. So what you do is very much based on your goal. If your goal is to start driving sales, you need to first increase reach. To increase reach, you need to start putting out content. How do you feel about boosting some of those? What's your con- what's the concept on that? Uh, That's a I, big big right, right, like like on Facebook. Boost and now, TikTok. you can get more. It's getting eighty seven percent more. You know, yeah. noticed. So right. I like. Did I sound like an ad? Yeah, you sounded exactly like <laughs> Facebook right there. <laughs> 20% off. TikTok does these 20% off coupons of like boost now, get 20% off your boost. Um, my thing is, is if the content isn't doing great organically, you probably have a messaging problem. And so I don't like spending a bunch of money to outdo the messaging problem. I love if you want to spend additional money to um, compound on Mm -hmm. good messaging. So the best boosts and the best ads you're going to have are pieces of content that performed really good organically. Um, If you posted it and it resonated and you got Mm -hmm. a lot of action on it, that would be a fantastic boost. Um, Because all you're going to do is take something that's already working well and put more leverage behind it. Um, Well, then you get into who do I target with this? Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's all, that's what, so let's talk about the, uh, couple that uh-huh. you're helping. Do they record their own videos and post their own stuff or they give you the videos and you and your team take care of it? They record their own videos and post it. Okay. So, um, the pros and cons of doing your own versus having a team do it for you. So pros are speed. I can record a video today and get out a video today because I am the, video editor, scripter, um, yep. poster, whatever, You're all copywriter, I'm all the things, um, is speed. The con is uh, there's not another set of eyes on your stuff if maybe your messaging doesn't come across the way you meant for it to, mm-hmm. or you, um, it, it is the pro and the con. Yeah, or Spe- you should have said like yeah. you should have said this for the opening statement. Right, or that or would have you, been better. Right, no, it's not horrible. Right, right. Or you wrong. said this, and because I know you, I know you meant this. But if I don't know you, it comes across like this. Right. Um. Yeah. And I recently ran into an issue where I posted out a video. What I said and what I meant did not come across the way what I said and what I meant was, and so I had backlash and. I deserved it. Like I screwed up. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I had sent that to somebody who had been a fresh set of eyes on it, mm-hmm. they probably would have seen it right from the get go. Yeah. Because they're not so in it. Right. If that makes sense. No, I get it. Yeah. So then with hiring a team um, or having like me and my, my people like edit it and get it out, uh, you're going to have more research backed 
planning of it. So like, I'm going to take off a couple seconds at the beginning because I know it's a little distracting. Yeah. I have the ability to add text on the screen in big bubble letters instead of just the little captions at the bottom because I know yeah. people like to read while they're listening. Mm -hmm. And so you get the added benefits of the strategy-backed editing that goes okay. into it. You would know that doing yeah. video editing. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. No, that's good stuff. Um, anything else you want to add to that? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, they're 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 doing very well and they're very successful in what they're doing because they did the work. They were willing to put in the time and energy investment and they were willing to sit there for two months and watch it do nothing in order to see it blow up in that third month. What about um, some of your other um, clients that, so not, not the couple, but you have some that are e-commerce. Uh-huh. What what's that like? Yeah, so bigger scale. Um, so with them, it's not the owner is recording videos and putting it out on their pages. Uh, for them, they typically have a team that does it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have a couple brands that what they do is they hire me and then I go source talent. We were just talking about mm -hmm. that, like sourcing talent. Right. Um, I have that person come in. I write all the scripts. They record the videos. I will send them to the brand in order to get them approved. Yep. And then we will do the hashtag research, do the copy, and send it out. Yeah. So there's a lot more steps into it when it's a bigger brand who's looking to scale, especially if they already have a pre presence on other platforms. And our goal is to get them on Instagram Reels or get them on TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, it then becomes, okay, match the br their current brand to the messaging that we're creating for them. Uh, and then find and hire people that we can use that match that brand message. We're creating characters right. for their brand. Yeah. So there's a lot. There's some fun ones out there that we've talked about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it just, it the scale of it is much larger. It's easy when I am the brand, I am the business. It is more complex and requires more money and time and planning when I have this big brand. It's grown outside of me, the owner, and now I need basically my own influencers and spokespeople yeah. to represent it. Like, so is there anything that, like, how do you do so much, right? Yeah. How do you do so much? We, uh, our previous episode to this was uh, virtual assistants, I believe. Yeah, virtual assistants. You use a virtual assistant. How do you get so much done? Yeah. Or are you just? I am about to hire a virtual assistant. So for the last four or five months, it's all been me. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I started working with you guys on some projects. Right. So I am starting to work with individual, other individual business owners, especially freelancers, uh, to be able to expand what I'm able to do in a day because I'm starting to reach that limit of what I can do by myself. Mm -hmm. I would much rather take people who are experienced in video editing or experienced in mm -hmm. um, invoicing and uh, like admin work. Right. I'm not good at admin work. I'm terrible at admin work. <laughs> Yeah, it can get neglected. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I'll like look up three days later. I'm like, mm, I haven't sent any of those uh, of those email yeah. projects out, and it's like propose. It's my business stuff. Yeah, you know, I, I, mean, I mean, you are a business owner. My client stuff comes first, and then at the end of the day, I'm like, what did I do in my business? Like, yeah, what did I well, do? To my yeah. I mean, I do. I, I look up to you on that because you're posting. You know, you're the brand, you're posting about your business and what you're doing. So I feel like, you know, marketing, social media wise, getting your message out, you're doing it every day. Yeah. Whereas like us, for example, you know, we do our, all of our client stuff and we, we've had a, a few projects uh, that could just keep going. But we bump them down. Oh, we bump mm -hmm. them down and we're sitting on them for like three months and it's yep. like you know once for this table we have a cool highlight video that we made for this you know cool footage we haven't put it up yeah you'll see it eventually but we <laughs> we're hitting other deadlines you know yeah yeah it's even though we had a date on that yeah it's hard right? because we get it someone comes in or like can you do this yes we can we bump it down yeah because a paying project is you yeah. know i have to treat project. myself like a client yeah. And that's what I started doing. I think doing. you do that really well. Yeah. That uh, might be your you. unicorn capability. Yeah. I treat myself like a client. Yeah. 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 And, well, and in doing that, I figured out I'm really good at sales. 
Um, and I'm really good at sales because I believe in the product that I'm selling mm -hmm. and I have a genuine interest in serving people. I, you always hear that and it's like that cliche, like selling a service. Yep. Um, but I've only ever experienced it on the other side of like manipulative sales tactics. Like I was literally talking to my husband the other day. I getting, because I watch a lot of business related videos, I get a mm -hmm. lot of sales related coaching videos mm -hmm. on my newsfeed. And they were talking about how to overcome the objection of I'll talk to my spouse. Okay. And they're teaching salespeople how to get out from under if a prospect says, well, I want to talk to my spouse about it. Okay. I don't like that. I think that's slimy um, yeah. and it makes me feel gross um, because a lot of the big projects I'm in now, I'm in them because it was a large financial investment. And I told, I was like, I want to talk to my spouse like mm -hmm. before I, and the biggest financial investment I've made to date, um, I told that to the salesperson. And he said, no problem. Let's set up a meeting for next Tuesday. Talk to him and get back with me. All pressure is immediately off me. Yeah. I can now make a educated decision. Yeah. And I talked to my husband and it was a big investment. And he was like, you know what? If this is the next thing that's going to move the needle on your business, let's do it. Yeah. Went back, talked to him. I felt great calling that salesperson and spending a lot of money. Yeah because he did not try to manipulate me. He sure. empowered me to make my own decision. Yeah. And so uh, in treating myself like a client, I found that is a skill set of mine. And so now I want to do more work focusing on that, like teaching people how to sell that way. Yeah. Because it no, leaves me feeling good. I told, no, I totally agree with you. Um, I get the sales part. Um, my downfall in sales is not being aggressive enough, I feel like. Mm, but I, I'm a little yeah. more like, oh, okay, call us whenever. And like now I'm not, I'm like, can I call you? And yeah. you know, whatever days can, so, um, and that's not really even aggressive, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's assertive. My aggressive isn't even aggressive, yeah. right? It's just following up and doing our job. Yeah. Well, and see, okay. I, I do want to touch on that because they're like, this is something I'm so passionate about in small business is when you're a small business owner and you don't want to inundate people with sales calls and you don't want to inundate people with, you know, usually the thought is, I don't want to pressure you into buying something you don't need. I don't want to pressure you into making this decision. Um, I don't, like a lot of us, we're good entrepreneurs and good small businesses. We're really hard on ourselves because we want to over deliver. Like we want to take care of our clients. Right but it means we are willing to hold our tongue when promoting ourselves because we don't want to underdeliver. Um, on the flip side of that, by somebody not working with you in video editing, there's a chance they go work with another video editing company that was sure. more aggressive right. who does not care about them as much as you do. Yeah, right. And um, I'm realized, I've realized that over time. Yeah, right? yeah. But yeah. I just think that'd be good for the, pe like, the people watching this. Like, yeah by not being assertive with what you can offer, um, you are running the chance of that person going to someone who cares less about them than you do. Right. And if you care about your clients, you're already a great business owner. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Yeah. Well said. Super passionate about that. That's like, that, that's, <laughs> that was like an opening, like skies opening heavens, like, ah, yeah. of like being a business owner and selling my services. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. Okay, so I have a question for you. I don't want to, you know, give away your fifty dollar a month class that's on Facebook. Go sign up now. Go do your research. Uh, but um, you know, you're willing to share almost anything, and you know, let's talk to you. Like, what do you actually share in that class? Like, you know, yeah. how are you helping business owners? I'm sure it's like posting. I want to put words in your mouth. You tell me. Like, what? How do you help people in the class? Yeah, so the group is a private Facebook group and I go live in there once a week and then I'll drop tutorial videos in that group on how to do things. And it's anything social media. So one of the most useful things that people who sign up for, uh, we do Q and A's, we do at least two a month. And I'll go on and I'll say, hey, bring your social media questions. So we had people come and ask questions about Facebook ads. We have people okay. come and ask questions about how to post a reel on okay. Instagram. Um, and then we have people who ask questions that are more content related. They're like, hey, I'm a real estate agent. How do I create content that gets people's attention? It's like, I feel like everybody's posting about mm -hmm. this. And sure. so we talk about how, okay, um, 
I mean, I can even go through this. I think one of the most helpful things in that group is how to create your content strategy. Okay. And so I always ask people when they, like when they come in for that training, I'm like, okay, who do you serve? Who is your audience? And what problems do they have that you can fix? Um, A lot of us, the mistake we make with social media marketing is we get online and we're like, hey, I have a $50 Facebook group course. Buy, 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 buy. Um, And every single post we do is sale, 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 Mm -hmm. sell, sell. And I told you earlier, service is selling. So I tell them, what problems do you solve? Pain points. Mm -hmm. Like, what are the people who you serve struggling with? Um, For me, for social media marketing, small business owners are struggling because they don't have enough inbound leads. They don't have enough customers. Their sales aren't as high as they would like. And they don't know how to attract customers and clients. And they don't have big budgets Mm -hmm. to spend to do it either. Like that is like, I know that is what they need. And so all my marketing is based on that. It's, you know, uh, if you're struggling with using, if Facebook feels foreign to you and you have no idea how to use Facebook and you see people using it and they're making money using it and you just feel like you're left behind, join this group. Mm -hmm. Like, is it more targeted to, you know, B2C or B2B? It's uh, honestly, it's more B2B. Um, it's, okay. it's, this group is really for small businesses. That does include MLM marketers because you are, they are a B2C, but mm-hmm. they are still a small business. Yeah. Like they only make money by getting people to buy their products. Right. Um, so it is good for if someone's in real estate and they're growing their personal brand, real estate agents, MLM companies. Um, I, my sister-in-law is a very successful MLM marketer. Uh, she has like 120,000 followers on TikTok and she grew it off of her health and wellness coaching. So her brand is health and wellness coaching and she offers these products. Okay. And um, she's fantastic at social media marketing. She jumped on the bandwagon when it started rolling out. But, um, but I always tell businesses that come in that group, let's focus on what problems you fix and then let's create content based on that. Right. So that's always the first thing I tell them when they get in that group. Tell me what problems you fix and then start making video about this is how you feel. This is what you're struggling with. This is how to fix it. You know, contact me and I'll help you more and with then this. You, then you explain like, you know, how to maybe, maybe hook up your Facebook and Instagram accounts, mm-hmm. you know, those kinds of things. Yeah. Should I be on Twitter? Right. right? Do you right. ever tell someone, no, you shouldn't be on a platform? Do you ever uh, tell them that? What I typically tell people is when you decide you're going to be on social media, claim all the handles. Right. That way, if in the future you decide to get on that platform, you're there. We help people do that with branding. Yeah. Where we design their logo. We, you know, If they don't right. have a name, we help them with that. And that. Right. Uh, so if I decide, okay, I want to grow my personal brand. I need to pick my name. So I'm Rebecca Rain. I have that claimed on Instagram, on TikTok. Rain. R E Y N, like Reynolds. I just wanted to do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, dude, I like getting into this mode, and I'm like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> okay. Yeah. Are Rebecca we gonna have Rain. to edit it in? <laughs> Rebecca Rain. Yeah, Rebecca Rain. And so I have that claimed on Twitter. I have it claimed on. I, I have Re- uh, Reynolds Media Marketing claimed on YouTube, but I have an account claimed on all social media channels. Mm-hmm. I don't use them all yet. Uh, But I tell people, claim all your channels and then double down on one. Like, learn that platform. Decide you're going to use that. Stick with it. I mean, I tell people, you can do it for a month, but 90 days is a good time to, like, really get in tune with something. Um, And I'm like, just put everything on that page. Because if you try to do it all at once, what happens is burnout. Um, I did the same thing. I was trying to grow my business TikTok while I was trying to grow my personal TikTok while I was trying to grow my Facebook page. And it felt like too much. And I was like, well, if I do that video, then I have to repurpose it. And then I have to turn it into a photo. And then I have to cut that all out, pick one platform and learn how to use that platform. Um, If you had to pick one, I'd say pick TikTok because it's the easiest to grow on Um, or pick uh, Instagram reels or pick Facebook because you're likely most familiar with it. Um, people think Facebook's dead. Like if you hear the social media community, Facebook's dead. Yep. Facebook is absolutely not dead. I still get tons and tons of leads from Facebook. Facebook's the bomb. Um, I think the magic is in Facebook groups. Um, those are the best place for like small businesses to go mm-hmm. gain leads. Yeah. Um, but pick one and then start posting. On, try to post on there once a day. Like literally if your business does that for the next 
month, I think it could be life changing for that small business. So then you help them understand the difference between stories and mm -hmm. reels yeah. and then post. Um, is there a specific type of content that you would represent that you would go, Hey, this should be a, a reel, a story, and this should be a post. Is there yep. kind of like a go-to? I think you can, I mean, I really think anything can go anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. stories are really good. Uh, just kind of like an overall breakdown, like stories are good for like your daily life. It's much less scripted. Um, and sometimes I wind up downloading my stories. Uh, you can download them all as one video, and mm -hmm. I wind up posting that as a video on my TikTok. I like or on sharing my reels. other people's stories. You do? To my story. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. Because I didn't have to work at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go post about your brand I for like you, this. and then yeah, you can go exactly. share it. It's yeah. exactly what I did this morning. Yeah. Um, I was like, why would I want to? This is perfect. Yeah, so. but but stories are a great way for like behind the scenes, what you're doing that day, showcasing uh, client testimonials. Um, because every time you post a story on Instagram, it shows up, uh, you know, that little header at the top, the people you follow, and right. it shows a little ring yep. every time they post a new story. Every time you post a story, you're bumping to the front of anyone who follows you newsfeed. And so in my opinion, that's free real estate. It's a right. free chance to get in front of it, which is why I do so many. Right. Um, and then what you can do on your stories is uh, there's an option when you post a story in the bottom right-hand corner to connect it to your Facebook page so right. that all the stories I post on my Instagram automatically go out on my Facebook page. So now I'm not just posting on one platform. I'm posting on two, but I'm mm -hmm. only spending my time and energy on one. And yep. people on Facebook reply to my Facebook stories, but actually they're from Instagram. And then I download those stories – and I will go post them to TikTok stories. Um, okay. And so then I'm on three platforms for the time it took me to record the videos on one. All in her car. All in my car. All in her car. All this in like my car. It's like your quiet, happy place. Yep, yep. That's where I went whenever uh, during COVID. It was yeah, I have a house of five. Yep. Three, three boys. And I was like, in the van? Quiet. That's where I had to go work? Yeah. It's an oasis. It's a little bit of a white noise in there, and you can focus. Yeah, there's no one there. It's hard to focus with a crying baby. Yes, yes, yeah. And they'll make good stories either. Yeah. Right? Background I mean, noise. Here's the deal, though. Sometimes background noise starts a conversation. I posted one video on my TikTok one time, and my I didn't realize he photobombed me. I'm, like, talking, mm -hmm. and he comes in and pokes in on the video. Mm-hmm. And then leave. So he looks like a creeper. Yeah, yeah. And I record the video. I like I'm editing it, and I see him do that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not redoing this. I'm posting it anyway. I post it, and I got several comments of like, I see you have a stalker. You know, who's the mm -hmm. man? Like, oh, your husband's being creepy. Yeah, yeah. And automatically engagement happened because people were like, what? They wanted to comment that they saw. So it. if you don't respond, they're like, eh. Whatever. If you do respond, then you start building relationships. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right? Yep. Which is so, what social, like marketing and social media is all building business relationships. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, me and uh, a guy I know, I, a guy I know mm -hmm. named Michael Morrison, um, you know, it's, it's also a way to prospect, mm -hmm. right? So it's prospecting on a different level. It's, right. it's a way to network. Right. Uh, you can look at it as two different ways. So. Right. And that's one reason that we're doing podcasts and stuff like that. It's a way for us to network, and it's a way for us to reach a different part of the world that we can't network at on a local level. Right, 100%. That's, I have a girl, um, you know, I told you about posting on my stories. I have a girl, she sent me an email, um, and it was linked to, like, a video she recorded, and it was just, like, an introduction. Her name is Yasmin, and she is another, like, social media manager. Mm -hmm. And I was posting on my TikTok regularly, she found me, I believe she found me, oh, she found me on TikTok and then she found me again in a Facebook group and realized I was the same person okay. because I was active in both. And then she sent me an email and was like, hey, um, you know, I, I don't know you, but I would love to like start a conversation with you. I would just love to get connected with what you're doing. So I'm like, cool. I set up a Zoom call with her. Her and I chatted there for, you know, 30, 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh a few weeks later, she joined my social media or my RMM Small Business Academy group. Mm -hmm. So now she is a paying client. Um, and now I have projects that she can help me on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I sent her a proposal the other day like, hey, give me pricing on these yeah. projects. 
because I posted on social media. I now have a business connection. Yeah. Um, and then two, it tells me a lot about her for her to not know me, send me an email, record a video and just say, Hey, yeah. I don't know you, but I want to get to know she you. She record but- a video and send you the video. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And then that led to not a, a message, call. not a not message. A message. Okay. Yeah. And that is what I, again, social media, like video lets me get to know you on a personal lever level without ever meeting you in person. Mm-hmm. Like, that is the coolest part about social media marketing is if you can tap into that video section, like um, people meet me in real life and they feel like they already kind of know me a little bit sure, yeah, because they saw me online. And I try to make sure everything I put out online is authentic to who I am in real life. Yeah. Um, but she is now a customer for me and I'm about to be a customer for her. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. The, uh, it's full circle. It is a full circle. Um, so how do you feel whenever you see a post without hashtags? Uh, I'm a level with you. I um, don't care. Don't care. <laughs> like if I see somebody else posting without hashtags, um, I'm not going to think too much of it. Like I am a fan for in my business what works for me. I think if you're not using hashtags, you are missing an opportunity to get your stuff queued up. Right. Um, but I'm not going to like hunt people down and like right. be like, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, because at least they're posting something. Like right. again, messy action. Like start doing it and then a month later be like, oh, I should so introduce. So then you have no feelings about people making up a hashtag that is irrelevant? It just doesn't help you. <laughs> it doesn't help you. So usually, I, those people don't understand how they work, and that's fine. Right. Right. Join the class. Yes, I, I'm a big fan of messy action, but hashtags are best used, in my opinion. With this is what I have seen work on the pages I run and for my own personal business. I like to use half of them describing the person who should be watching that piece of content. Mm-hmm. Half of them describing what that content is or interests that match that content. Do you try to hit like a, uh, a number of hashtags or? Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of one of those things. It costs me nothing to do all of them. So on Instagram, you're allowed to have uh, 30. On TikTok, it's just however many like spaces is available. Mm-hmm. So on Instagram, um, if I have the option to get 30 keywords in my mm-hmm. post, in my opinion, like why would I not take advantage of that? Right. So you have to have some hacks. You're setting in your car. You're not writing in those hashtags every time. You have no. to copy and paste them in from somewhere. Yes. Right? So I just use the notes app on my yeah. phone uh, and I just keep a list of hashtags that I think are good. And then I go pull from them right. for different content. So most of my content has to do with like mom, 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 Entrepreneur is one of the hashtags, business owner, small business, uh, motivation, stuff like that. And then uh, I have a lot of content that talks about like relationship, me and my husband, like, you know, couples goals, hashtags, married life, hashtag couple argument, like, you Mm -hmm. know, things like that. And then I have ones that are related to marketing. So hashtag social media, hashtag, like things like that. So you can use, um, literally, if you just Google like hashtag research, you can find apps that will help you do that for free. Um, I have to remember the name, but then there's also like uh, programs you can buy that are like eight bucks a month, five bucks a month, not super expensive. Yeah. Um, that you can then turn around and buy to use for hashtag research. Okay. Anything else you want to share about the the group that you have? Uh, I mean, honestly, if you're just looking, if you are a social media newbie or a marketing newbie, um, this group is going to help you know what to post, where to post, how to post it, and then give you a place where you can go ask questions when you get stuck. Because some of us know what to do, but then it's just nice having that extra like, yes, this is, you know, this is looking good or, hey, I posted this. I'm not seeing any traction on it. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Um, and learning best practices. I got a question for you. So this is the other the other side of the coin. Um, I'm sure you had a little bit of turnover in the group, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why have people left? So wh- the first person to leave was because he hired a social media manager for his business. Okay. Um, he decided that he was going to outsource that, which yeah. is fantastic and good for him. So and he realized that it was a lot of work. Yes, it is <laughs> and work. And he had the money, so he's going to hire. Yes, okay. it is work. Um, the other person, let's see, there's another lady who left, and it was because, and again, messaging and marketing is important. She thought that I was going to be putting um, like calendars in every month, which is maybe something I should introduce because I do think that would be super helpful. I do Mm -hmm. post prompts regularly in the group when people are like stuck. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know 
what I should talk about. Um, but she thought they were going to be like customized calendars. Like, Oh, you make their calendar schedule for them? Yes. Okay. And so like, this is your industry. These are your topics. And here's what you're going to, we're going to, these are what you need to post about calendar. Right. Okay. Yes. That, that would be your work. Yes. That would be the person that signed up's work. Yes. Yeah. They would need to come up with their yeah. calendar. But that did get me thinking because now, um, and so like I asked for that feedback and she told me, she's like, this is what I thought it was. And that's really yeah. what I'm needing. So now my gears are turning out like, okay, how could I put industry content calendars and make that something like I can create templates for mm -hmm. each industry. I already have one for real estate agents. Yep. I already have one for, um, makeup and cosmetics and I already have one for health and wellness. And okay. so I was like, why don't I just make these you know, a little bit more, not generic, but make them a little bit more template friendly. Right. Post them in that group. And then now anytime someone joins the group, they have access to templates for their content prompts. Um, yeah. And so like, so far that I've only had two people leave the group and, and that is why they left the group. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else? I, I don't think so. I, I really think that that group is everything I wish I would have known about marketing myself and my business okay. seven years ago. Yeah. It's it's a wealth of knowledge over the course of seven years, and I can go as high level or low level as we want to go um, before it turns into customization. Well, um, hit the like button, subscribe, uh, ring a bell, uh, leave a comment. And um, thanks to Allied Medical Marketing for beers, being our sponsor for this episode. Thank you to Rebecca for coming and spending her time with us here uh, with the Ad Design Tunnel and uh, for the podcast Behind the Unicorn. Uh, look forward to uh, seeing how you, know, you your company, your family uh, grows, and uh, we'll stay in touch. Absolutely. Pleasure was all mine. <laughs> Thank you. This is the best part of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Take this. Yay. Oops, you got to hit the camera. You got to hit your camera. Oh, no. This, this isn't working. There it is. <laughs> What was that? Oh, I throw it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you wanted me to tap it. All right, Rebecca, so while we're taking a break here i uh didn't know why i brought a special treat <laughs> this I didn't is know what they we made those. this is what we feed our unicorns that come <laughs> i haven't i haven't tried one yet i didn't know little debbie made a unicorn cake these were brought to my attention and we have to now feed the guest the unicorn, the unicorn. You want to make munchies? I know noises? you worked out this morning. We don't want to. <laughs> I've been wanting, I've been waiting, I think almost a month to try these out, and I waited for an episode. And this is the. These episode. are not. These are only a week old. They're only a week old. Yeah, they're pretty fresh. It smells like a little Debbie. Is it good? Okay. Typically, I do not like little Debbie snack cakes at all. That's actually solid. For unicorns. That's like a strawberry shortcake You're a unicorn. Bliss. That's why you wow, like it. Wow, it's magical. Hurry up before Ryan gets what back. What did little, little Before Ryan do? gets back, eat this. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. It that really is good. pretty good. Yeah. <laughs>